trying to go to Bodenath now, and it looks like we're in the midst of some some celebration. Pretty crazy. I don't know if it's an RT ceremony or what. But I know Diwali just ended, so I don't know if this is the end of Diwali or uh, RT. But it looks pretty interesting. Really crowded. Like to find out what this festival is. What festival is this? Chata. Chata? Chata? Yeah, yeah. Chata. Yeah, yeah. Different from Diwali. Yes, different from Diwali. Okay, thank you. Okay, welcome. So sometimes I don't do so great in big crowds and this is a perfect example. I'm getting better with it, but crossing that bridge, I was starting to freak out a little bit because the woman behind me just kept pushing and pushing and pushing. And that type of thing you have to get used to, but it's, it's magnified because of the celebration going on. It looks like some politicians or something because there's military and there's police, they have the road blocked off. So I don't know if the president or prime minister is here, but you definitely have to stop, take a breath, and relax. That's what I have to do, because like the huge crowds when it's just body to body and you're not even glow sticking in a club, you know, it's, it's pretty stressful. The first time we came to India and Nepal, it was very shocking to see the, the swastikas, but those are actually uh, a Hindu symbol used for thousands of years before the Germans, the Nazis, and Hitler ever got a hold of them. And so don't be shocked. I don't know if this is a temple or just a building, but it's it's like a good luck symbol. Well, we're definitely taking a, the off the beaten track to Bodenath. It's back road and uh, just walk past a back alley with a goat screaming and they had it strung up and they were literally seconds before they're about to chop its head off. So I had to I had to turn my head because I didn't want to watch that. I know it's like a first world privilege to like be a vegan or a vegetarian and you know these people have to eat what they can and there's no judgment. There's no judgment on my part for that but it still is a powerful experience to hear the cries of the goat seconds before the, uh, the blade comes down on its neck. A lot more shops, so I think we're, yep, almost to the stupa. A ton of shops there, so you could tell you're getting into a touristy area. And, of course, Well, it's almost getting dark here at the Bodenath Stupa. One of the biggest, if not the biggest stupas in the world, a very sacred uh, site for Buddhists. And there's actually a lot of Tibetan refugees in this area um, right after Tibet was taken over, invaded by China. They, they, refugees came in and settled around this holy stupa. It was damaged in the 2015 earthquake. The very top spire there, the gold spire, it was totally destroyed. Um, you can see now it's rebuilt. It, it was rebuilt with, within about a year, October 2016, it reopened. And legend has it that there is a Buddha entombed at the bottom of this stupa. So it's a very sacred place for worship. You can see the prayer wheels. You go around clockwise around the stupa to, to meditate and pray. You can also prostrate yourself uh, several times. We saw some people doing that. So. Good way to end the day here in Budanath. Um, pretty touristy area. Had 
had some drinks and some potato wedges and the bill ended up being like 12 bucks. So you can see it's really crowded here. Still pretty mellow compared to Tamil. A little bit mellower vibe despite the crowds. But as it's getting dark, I'll probably wrap it up here. Plenty more coming from Nepal and Kathmandu. Get out there, find your adventure, and be infamous. Infamous.